our minibus was causing heavy traffic due to the curfew, and um, we're just locked in amongst millions of people. And all of a sudden, police were trying to barricade people off. Police got pushed down, and millions of people were just fighting. And there was just rioting in the streets, isn't it? The skyline was just lit up at night. The, uh, the, the Sri Lankans, as you know, were, were getting their revenge on, on the Tamil owned build, uh, factories and, and the industry in the Colombo. And of all things to be destroyed, it was the wrong thing. You know, they were in my fact, you know, just cutting off their own noses because Sri Lanka needs industry, but the cotton mills were ablaze. The coconut oil mills were ablaze. You know, hotels that they picked, which were Tamil owned, they firebombed. Well, we were in Trincomalee when it started, and there was, must have been a lot of raging fires in the town. Uh, there was a lot of gunfire. The next morning we went into the town. Fires were still burning pretty fiercely. And um, the thing was entirely sectarian. I mean, if you were a Tamil, you were in trouble. If you weren't a Tamil, there, it was rather like being in Ulster. You know, there was no war going on unless you were one side or the other. We then had to take a different route back to Colombo. And um, again, it's wherever the Tamils appeared to be in the minority was where there was some pretty fierce carryings on. Would you go back there? Oh, very much. Absolutely beautiful island. It's just so sad to see it being uh, destroyed in this way. Anti-Tamil riots and chaos erupted on July 23, 1983 in Sri Lanka, a pear-shaped island off the coast of India. The state-sponsored pogrom left a black mark on the country's history and the minds of many. The riots were carried out by mobs of Sinhalese, with the complicity of the Sri Lankan government, who targeted Tamil homes and businesses. The hardest hit parts of the country were areas where Tamils lived amongst the predominant Sinhala population. Colombo, the nation's capital, was badly affected, and the violence spread to Kandy, the hill capital, Nuvarelia, Badula, Bandaravala, Matala, Nigambo, and many other parts. However, the impact of Black July has affected the entire island. The violence was sparked after the burial of 15 soldiers who were ambushed by Tamil militants in the north. Perhaps in retaliation to the systematic oppression of the minority Tamils by the government of Sri Lanka. I believe it was a Sunday um, that um, the bodies of the 13 soldiers were supposed to come to Colombo. And prior to that, um, we didn't hear much about it, but we were aware that 13 soldiers had, had been killed and uh, the, the bodies were coming to Colombo. Black July, Kalavaram Nadakragu, Mudal Nal, Nan, another Talamai, Witwara Kaoru, Salonil Poirin then. Upper than a Munukir in the newspaper of Aichukan in there, or a lavaki single of Vasi Ketter in the Talen and Blangi Kondin, Tinavelli, Bomb Blast Pani, Punjami, Twelve Armies, Tetta and Arinji, Arinji Kondin, Alpran and Budikapoi, News Gala Pathu under them, News La Isla Petti, Alam Kati Kondin. We were living in Vallavatta. And uh, my workplace is in Fort. Uh, I had, uh, I have two sons. Uh, at that time, they were eleven and nine, nine years old, and they were studying in into college, Bamalpetiya. And on the particular day at, in the morning, I heard some news that uh, some of the 
shops owned by the Tamils in Boralda were attacked, looted, and actually they were set, so they set fire, and and the owners were attacked, assaulted. So I told my children not to go to school on that particular date. We were kind of concerned, okay, is, does this mean there's going to be an issue in Jaffna? But there's always a thought about something going to happen in Jaffna. It never occurred to us that this could come to Colombo. Because, I mean, Colombo was metropolitan, was, was the tourist hub. You know, it never occurred to us. So Sunday was pretty much spent, okay, you know what, let's just, let's just watch the news, let's be aware of it. I remember hearing on the news that the bodies had arrived and the, the, the funerals were going to take place uh, in Colombo. Then Monday morning, um, one of our neighbors um, came back from work early. And this is early, early in the morning. He came back from work early and he said, um, there's problems starting. I think you should take any valuables you have, like jewelry and other stuff that you want to put away safe and go put it in the local bank. For us, the local bank was the commercial bank. So right away, my mother and, and, my, and my grandmother kicked into high gear. They started packing everything up. It couldn't have been more than half an hour later. My, my grandfather comes in on his bike, on his motorbike, and he goes, OK, you know what? You're not going anywhere because the local grocer at the top of the road, it's burning. I was pregnant for nine months. My husband went to work. I was going to go to the bus. 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 I was going to go to Anganda would want to do a flat. Adela first corner house. About an Akal Katikondo, Odikondo, where an Angle would an Pinnacle corridor, Alcor kitchen. A clay laram boy in the term of a laram kuda in Nathan Pay in the nine months. Actually, like we were driving, like um, the driver was driving, and then all of a sudden he was panicked, and then uh, we were all looking and then we saw this body hanging on the tree like you know and uh, we didn't know why it happened because uh, we weren't aware of this situation uh, all of a sudden we saw this body and then we couldn't we didn't know what to do even the driver didn't know but then we heard screams and yells of people and the people were running uh, like on the road and then everybody was like putting their bikes away and then motorcycles and threw up and then they just started running they didn't know where they were going to so i went i uh, ran to the kitchen and then i discovered that these people were trying to come to come into the house so i b locked and bolted the back door came to me came to the front of the house where my wife and children were there and I told them, this is very dangerous, we can't stay here, we had to move out. By that time, you know, the whole row, everywhere people were running around and there was complete pandemonium. And the single month of Tanama, Power, Odung, Lampo, Monday, Angel, Carried the Melia, Palayam Palaya, with the Tom Duapan Duapan Sonaga, Nanga, Odi, Odi, Olingin, and the with the ceiling of Gla Olingitan, male or ceiling a car Glolingitan, Amma Pai, Tangachel and Pirinjitanga, Brazil or my Pinal and Pinal or ground playground on Rundare Adela. இருக்கேக்குல <laughs> Nila Mela or a glass, a lum, mudupu, a lum, melam, a pretty signa in the mind today. Upper nan in the season, Pinalapa, Makanil and Soli, Rangi, ceiling, Rangan, and Rangaikula, Tanangle Terinjadim, 
enna veedi edidunte the next thing i knew my mother was shepherding us um shepherding me my grandmother and then before you knew it there was like there was like tens of our neighbors in our house everybody was being shepherded by my grand by my mother through um, a gate in the back of our house a uh, backyard to our neighbors and i remember running through it and one of the neighbors in the back of our avenue is singer lees and that was my mother's intention that we would go there for safety and they saw us coming you you could see them peek through their windows they saw us coming and they shut the door and so my mother quickly changed the the route and she took us across the lane into a house where the front door was open i didn't know this but there was a widow who lived in this house and she was a single lease widow it just again a twist of fate the front door was open she never knocked she never asked permission she took us in there was about 16 of us in that house in the front and this lady came out and um she said no no it's too many of you i can't keep too many of you my mother just kept talking and i remember her pulling me and putting me in the front of her i didn't know at that time but apparently this lady had a soft spot for me even as a baby and she's my mother just kept me in front and then before before i knew what was going on the lady had acquiesced she had said yes and she was taking us into this tiny little storeroom at the very back of the house and it was this stuff junk in the storeroom and it's about at that time i'm thinking of this but 12 or 13 of us because i know a couple of the men had decided to go back into the houses to stay with the houses so it's 12 or 13 of us in this tiny storeroom men women children and there was this one window and the double doors were closed and we stayed in the storeroom for what felt like forever but was no more than a few hours it felt like an eternity every second ticked and you could hear the screams and you could hear you could hear the, the burning the bombs the the like i don't know what kind of bombs they were using but it, you could hear the detonations you could hear the sh- gunfire and we can smell the smoke and we were stuck in this room so after that we were coming um, towards palandan and then we heard this firing so then we were really shivering we we knew like something really really happening but like something's happening um while we got to like almost parandan because that, that's why we have to turn to go to molitib and um that junction and there was a while like i i, I still can see so I have this like flashback i should say like uh, there were bodies put into the wall, you know while and then there was some hanging outside the well and then there were all over parandan junction all over there were a lot of bodies then i knew that and then we heard this uh, military coming like firing and then the driver said okay let's we have to we have to do something and he drove to, to like in those like fields like at the paddy fields and things uh, that all this he didn't know where he was going and i delivery ko pota ne na na jeff na ka okay we went it how i let him boy kitchen ko le irundha na chinna kitchen അപ്പോൾ ഇവർ മുൻതോറയും അമത്തി വെച്ചുകൊണ്ടിരുന്നത് മറ്റേ മറ്റേ ഡോർത്ത ഒരാൾ അഭിപ്രായമെല്ലാം അമത്തി കൊണ്ടിരിക്ക് ഒരാൾ കടസിയാ വന്ന് ഒരു ഇല വാങ്ങലാണ് ഇടിച്ചത് ഡോറ് അപ്പോൾ അതൊക്കെ പ്ര അത് അമത്തി പിടിച്ചു കൊണ്ടിരുന്ന പ്രിയോസനം മറ്റേ വേർ തുറന്നിട്ട് തുറന്നു വിടാൻ ചൊല്ലി വേർ നിങ്ങൾ ഓണിൻ ചെയ്യാൻ വേണ്ട ഞങ്ങൾ ഇങ്ങോട്ട് ഇരിക്കുകയെല്ലാം താറുമുണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ ഇവരെ കൂട്ടി കൊണ്ടുവന്ന് പോയി ഡോറുകളാൽ അങ്ങനെ റൂം കൂട്ടി കൊണ്ട് പോകുന്നത് ഞാൻ മാറ്റൻ മാറ്റണ ഇല്ല ഇല്ല പോകുന്നുണ്ട് ചൊല്ലി ഇവരുടെ ബ്രദർ ബ്രദർ ഇരുന്നവർ കസിൻസ് ആൻറ്റി എല്ലാവരും ഇരുന്നത് അപ്പോൾ ബ്രദർ ചൊന്നവർ ഇല്ല വാങ്കണ്ണി അത് പോകല അവരാണ് അണ്ണ അവർ വരണ്ട് കൂട്ടി കൊണ്ടുപോയി അന്തകൂട്ട അന്തകൂട്ട പോയികളെയും പടിയിൽ ബ്ലഡ് ഡ്രോപ്പ് ഡ്രോപ്പ് അവിടുന്ന് വിളുന്ന് കിടക്ക് അതിനെല്ലാം ഞാൻ പൈന്ന് കൊണ്ട് ഞാൻ പോകുന്ന അമുദന ഡോക്ടറുടെ പോയികളെ ഒരു എല്ലാം നോമലാത്താനേ ഇരുന്നത് ആൻ്റേക്ക് ഫീൽ വണ്ണിയിട്ട് മൂവ്മെൻറ്റ്സ് എല്ലാം കുറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ എൻ്റെ വീട്ടിൽ ഇതാനിരുന്നു ഞങ്ങൾ ഡോക്ടറുടെയും ഞങ്ങൾ പോയില്ലാൻ പോയിട്ട് തരുന്നുണ്ട് മൂവ്മെൻറ്റ്സ് കുറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ട് ഞാനെല്ലാം ഫീൽ പണിയുന്നതാണ് ഞാൻ ആ ഡോക്ടറുടെ പോവാ പയ എന്താണ് അതോടെ ഫ്ലൈറ്റിൽ പോയിട്ടില്ല ഫ്ലൈറ്റിൽ പോകുന്നത് ഫ്ലൈറ്റുകളും കൂടെ ബുക്ക് പണിയെല്ലാം പോയ
இனி ஷிப்புக்கு போகிறதுக்கும் பெரிய கஷ்டப்பட்டு தான் நாங்கள் ஷிப் வேறு ஒரு இன்ஃப்ளூயன்ஸ் யூஸ் பண்ணி தான் கிட்டத்தட்ட சீட்டும் எவ்வளோத்துக்கு வெளியாக கிடைக்கலமும் கிடைச்சி மாமரம் இருக்கு ஒரு சிங்கள அண்ணன் சொன்னான் கேரி தெமலியா தமசில் ஐ மெத்தனா பழையான் துவப்பாங்கன்னு சொல்ல அப்பா கையை வச்சு யோசிச்சு கொண்டு என் அப்பா கட்டின வீடு எங்களை சொந்த வீடு ஆன அப்புறம் அப்பாவுக்கு இதாக இதாக பண்ணோன்னா எங்களை கடைசி தங்கச்சி அவள் எங்கள் எங்களில் நாலு சகோதரங்க நான் தான் வீட்டில் மூப்பு ரெண்டாவது தம்பி மூன்றாவது தங்கச்சி நாலாவது ஒரு தங்கச்சி கடைசி தங்கச்சி என்ன செய்தான் உடனே அவளுக்கு சிங்களம் கதை தெரியும் அப்போ அவளுக்கு வயசு நாளைக்கு ஒரு ஒம்பது வயசு ஒம்பது வயசு இருக்கு ஓ ஒம்பது வயசு இருக்குது அப்போ வரைக்கும் அவள் சொன்னாங்க மே மை தாத்தா இருக்கு ஆண்டே பான்னு சொல்லி அப்போ அவங்க கத்தி அவங்க வந்தாங்க அப்போ தங்கச்சி போய் கட்டி பிடிச்ச உடனே தங்கச்சி அவன் வீட்டை தான் சார் உத்துவப்பாங்கன்னு சொன்னோன்னே தங்கச்சி அப்பா ஓடிட்டு அங்கால போய் பத்து கிலோ ஒழுங்கிட்டேன் இப்படி 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 டைம் ஆகும் ஏழு எட்டு இரவு எட்டு மணி ஆகணுன்னே எல்லோரும் போயிட்டாங்க ஆனால் நிற்கிறாங்க அந்த இந்த தக்ஸுகள் நின்று சாமான்களை பொறிக்கொண்டிருக்கிறாங்க In Colombo, the violence began with groups of Sinhala mobs arriving from outside the districts, carrying voters lists to identify Tamil houses, and systematically attacks were made on people and properties. But what my grandfather said to me was the guys who came, they were drugged, they were drunk, and they had lists. They had lists of houses and names they knew which houses were tamil and they knew where they, they had to go because not a single of the singhalis houses were touched and the only list of that kind is the voters list they knew where they had to go these thugs were given it was a systemic process it wasn't a retaliation it wasn't because they just had a bad hair day it wasn't because they decided this morning we hate the tamils they knew they were going out to eradicate the tamils from colombo so my children and they were four or five adults and children and my neighbor who was a tamil officer the army officer he was not in the house at that time his wife and children were there she they also ran when they saw me, uh, my family running getting out of the house and running to, away they also joined us so we all all of, all of us were in the dogs kennel um, about i think 17 of us adults and children because all the families that were you know close together ran into the into the place for safety so the the, the first thugs that they came it seemed like their the only agenda was to kill and to burn to destroy property so kill and and destroy and then the looters came the hyenas so a lot of people went to the um window facing the street and watching so i also just went out and saw um there were a lot of people actually they were having clubs and knives and everything and they stopped cars and they were talking uh, they the the people who were traveling inside the car and and uh, some people were pulled out of the cars and assaulted and uh, they t- overturned the cars and and uh, set fire to the I, I i saw two or three police officers at the junction in front of the lake house but they didn't take any action to stop them so i was so scared because i know what is happening so i went back to my seat and seat and i didn't want to watch any more because i was so scared agents of the state such as the army and the police stood by and did nothing to quell the angry rioting mobs and some even encouraged the violence so we got as many people together and um it is basically at that time our immediate neighbors basically the women and the children 
and my and my mother took the lead and we were walking and that's when I remembered my dog and I just had a birthday right so my grandfather had brought home this puppy for me because I was going to be there for a long period of time and this would be my dog that would stay back whenever I went back with my parents to Middle East I would come back and I would have this pet and I turned around and I walked, I ran back into our, our house on the front gate to get to get my dog. My mother screamed, no, don't. And I didn't freeze, I didn't stop because of my mother's scream. I heard her scream. I stopped because that's when I saw the monks coming around the corner. Buddhist bhikkhu monks, head shaven in their saffron robes with machetes. On any level, this image is so not right. Then on the third day, we thought it's not safe to stay there anymore. So we had to go to camp where, the, where all those uh, refugees were there. Actually, the camp was opened at the Hindu College Bamala Pitiya. Saras for the whole all close by. Lorries, trucks were being brought in that would take us to a refugee camp. We didn't know who was driving. We didn't know who had organized these trucks. We didn't know which refugee camp, what refugee camp. In Colombo, there were refugee camps. We didn't know where they were going. But we just knew we couldn't stay here. So now the sun had set, it is night time, and we were being loaded into these refugee camp, in, into these trucks, um, lorries. They made me stand towards the front of the uh, lorry because it was jam-packed. People were so crushed in there. We were like cattle. We were like, we were like swine being taken away. So the, the truck would, was going and turning into the Gaul Road and that's where most of the shops are. Um, there was broken shops, places on fire, and that's when I saw it. This was one of the hardest memories for me to hold, and I can't let go. It's a human form burning. I couldn't tell if it was a male or a female, but all I knew was it was a human form. You could see the head, the body, and the legs. It was burning and nobody was doing anything. It's like you would burn garbage. I guess to them Tamils were garbage. A week of violence left the South engulfed in flames with 3,000 lives lost, thousands more displaced and the loss of over a billion dollars in property. The Sri Lankan government was forced to impose a nationwide curfew to control the violence and to start relief work.